Here's Elsa and Anna in 2013's Frozen, and here they are in Frozen 2. While they may look like the characters you know and love at first glance, if you zoom in on their clothes, you'll see how they're different. In the update, you can now see three-dimensional jewels, the stitching, and even the finest of threads. All these details wouldn't have been possible in the first film. Technological breakthroughs allowed them to do so much more for the sequel, even creating a horse completely out of water. Why did Disney Animation Studios make us wait six years between Frozen and Frozen 2? Well first, it wanted to make sure the original warranted a sequel with a story worth telling. But during that time, Disney Animation, which works completely separately from Pixar, made technological advancements that would let the team improve on the look and design. A team of about 75 animators worked on the movie over the course of roughly four years. Since one of the major themes in the new story is change, they had a lot of work to do to update the characters and their surroundings. Change mocks us with her beauty. While also remaining true to the world they created. The main characters Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, and Olaf were created from scratch for the first film, but now they needed a makeover. You can see the subtle differences in their faces, but even more so in their hair and clothes. Disney Animation had a few movies in between Frozen and Frozen 2 to develop their animation. Anna's hair was based on programs used to make the hair in Moana. For Moana, they developed a software called Quicksilver, which allowed them to create realistic hair that could react to forces like wind, water, and intense action. According to technical animation supervisor Christopher Evert, Moana's hair came with a lot of tight coils, while Anna had a lot more individual hairs for them to maintain. A new software, called Beast, allowed them to simulate more and more hairs per frame and at a much faster rate. Some of the characters would be put through a roller coaster test simulation. This identified whether they needed to add more qualities to the hair, such as thickness. Hair, again, was based on character. They made Anna's hairstyle more mature, as the character had aged. The clothing designs in general are much more intricate than they were in the original. Just look at these two shots of Anna and Elsa in Frozen and Frozen 2. You can tell from this shot in the second movie, where Anna and Elsa are standing in the Enchanted Forest, that their clothes are much more detailed. Elsa's dress no longer looks like it's covered in just two-dimensional sequins. Instead, there are incredibly detailed little jewels everywhere. Meanwhile, you can now even see all the little stitching on Anna's cape. And in this shot, where Anna and Olaf are enjoying the warmer weather, you can really see every little thread in Anna's dress. While Elsa goes through some costume changes, animators made sure whatever she was wearing was part of a cool color palette. The animation team felt if they went too warm with the color choices, something would feel off, as certain colors become associated with certain characters. Movement was also an essential trait to get right. Getting an animated character to move is all about mastering control points. Every finger has three or four control points alone. In Frozen 2, Elsa's feet had multiple control points so she would look natural while moving barefoot, which was important given that her most important actions happen while barefoot. And movement, like clothes and hair, can be used to define character traits. The animators utilize movement to demonstrate how the characters change since the first film, as well as the differences between them. Elsa walks and reacts with refined movement, especially compared to Anna, who was much more animated in her actions. And while the two sisters spent most of Frozen apart, in Frozen 2, they're together most of the time, so the differences between them are even starker. You can see this especially in the charade scene. Elsa is mostly silent, listening and moving just straight up and down, while Anna is moving around with her whole body. Yet Elsa, who is much more confident now than she was in the first movie, walks with a much greater sense of purpose. There's a detail even more subtle than movement that the animators needed to get right. Breathing. It's especially essential for a movie involving singing. The animation team even brought in a vocal coach to teach them about the kinds of breathing techniques a professional singer would use. 
Take a look at this scene when Elsa is singing Into the Unknown. We can see all the subtle movements in her body, almost as if we were watching Idina Menzel recording the track. But there are some new characters here that posed an even bigger challenge for the animators, and that's because they aren't human or creature, but the elements. Now, on most computer animated movies, the visual effects and animation teams work separately. The animators create the characters, and the visual effects team adds computer simulations like weather effects or how a piece of clothing will drape over a character. But what do you do when the effects are your characters? There is no better example of this than Gale, who's a gust of wind. Wind would usually be a visual effects simulation added in later on in the process. But here it's a character, so they had to create a new program for the animators just for this, called Swoop. Usually, you just see the end result of wind, but this time we see it as a whole character. To get this basically invisible character right, a wind rig ran alongside given scenes, and they were able to manipulate its size and add simulations to this that helped determine Gale's speed and path. Here's Gale blowing into a house and pushing Sven out the door. Creating Gale also required working closely with the environments team on elements such as the leaves that get swept up by Gale. For instance, when Olaf is singing his When I Am Older solo, piles of leaves needed to be placed on the ground for Gale to pick up. At one point early in the design process, they contemplated having Gale take the form of the other characters, mimicking their shapes with debris. And animators had to think about whether at any given moment Gale was supposed to be playful or dangerous. But let's not act like this wasn't a fun challenge. Along with studying physics, the animators went skydiving for inspiration. The skydiving experience certainly shows if you look at this shot of Bruni being swept up by the wind. He has his arms and legs out in skydiving form. The elements came in all shapes and sizes. The biggest ones were the earth giants. Because of their large size, the earth giants had to move very slowly. To design them, the animators actually incorporated characteristics of the trolls from the first film. As you can see from these drawings, they shared a lot of the same features, from the shape of their torso to the size of their nose. Not surprisingly, making a giant made out of rocks move isn't easy. The rigging process was intense, as their rocky forms and asymmetrical bodies restricted their movements. It was also important that each piece of rock moved correctly and didn't go through another rock. And last, but certainly not least, there was the knock, the water horse which was the product of eight months of hard work. There were several challenges to creating a creature made out of water that also needed to be true to the look of an actual horse. Because it has no pupils, or real eyes for that matter, it's a lot harder to convey the character's emotions, so the animators relied on the knock's ears. They made the ears point to wherever the knock was looking while also conveying its mood. If the ears point back, the horse is angry, if the ears point to the rider, they respect the rider. But before the animators could control its emotions, they had to figure out how to control the water it's made of. While the water in Moana had some personality, it was nowhere near this complex. In early tests, there was way too much water coming off the mane and tail, which animators described as looking like a fire hydrant. They eventually controlled it to the point where it looked more like a gentle waterfall. The knock also had to look like it was part of the ocean, so they looked at elements of the actual ocean, like mist and spray, which forms at the end of the mane and tail as it moves. Staying true to the water form also required making the knock different from an actual horse in some ways, like the way it moved. When the knock is running on water, you can see the hooves sort of break and stretch, which is apparent if you slow down this clip of the knock running on a wave. To get a sense of actual horses, Animators studied horse anatomy, met with a horse trainer, and actually rode horses. It was important not just to capture the look of horses, but the weight of them, so Elsa could really get a sense of this creature's power. While all the characters went through transformations, a lot changed in their world as well. In Frozen, much of the land is covered in snow, so the animators went to Cheyenne, Wyoming to walk through waist-deep snow and see what it would be like for the characters. But in Frozen 2, it's supposed to be autumn, so the snow is melted. This presented new challenges. Since more of the ground and surroundings were revealed, 
There were a lot more details that needed to be included in each shot, particularly in a new setting for the movie, The Enchanted Forest. Every tree, rock, and plant required a lot of planning and work to get where it is. For inspiration, the team ventured to the wilderness of Norway, Iceland, and Finland to experience what the characters they were animating would be experiencing and to get inside their heads. While there, they studied the landscape and the culture and even stood on a glacier to see what it would be like for Elsa to stand on one. They also worked with a botanist to determine what trees and plants would realistically grow in the area. Just like Elsa's outfit, a crucial part of establishing this particular setting was nailing its color palette, which they wanted to be in line with the first movie. As you can see in this shot of the Enchanted Forest, the leaves are mostly orange and magenta. There's barely, if any, yellow, which is a color usually associated with fall. Compare that with this opening scene in Frozen, and you can see how similar they really are. Many of the shots in this forest were purposely shot extra wide, to make the characters feel more alone and isolated. While much of the film takes place in new lands, Frozen 2 also revisits some familiar places, particularly Arendelle. Arendelle is covered in snow for most of the first movie's run, but remember, it's autumn now, so the kingdom needed a makeover of its own. Because buildings were no longer covered in snow, animators had to add lots of new details. They filled in roof details in places where there might have been snow originally, but there were also some buildings designed with colors that were specifically meant to look good with snow and ice. These buildings received a new paint job, so they look good against the brand new fall backdrop. One of the big turning points in Frozen 2 happens in the Dark Sea. This is where the Nox scene takes place. Animating realistic water is not easy, and animators used what they'd learned on previous Disney films to make it work. For the Dark Sea, they were largely inspired by Rainis Fera, a black sand beach on the southern coast of Iceland. Nailing this scene required a lot of coordination between the animation team and the visual effects team, and since she was going to be walking on the simulation, it all had to match up perfectly. The animators also mastered some factors about water that you'd never think of, like how sand looks when it gets wet after getting hit by a wave. Disney Animation developed another simulation engine for Moana called Splash, which gave them a lot of practice making the open seas. Through this, they could calculate, for example, what it would look like for a wave to break. For Moana, the challenge was trying to make the water calm, but for Frozen 2, it was important to make the waves big and overpowering while still seeming real. You can see those realistic waves directly here, as Elsa stares them down on the beach before running in head-on. While these look incredibly realistic, the animators actually pulled back so they didn't look too real. Sure, they now had the tools to make it look like actual water, but sometimes, it's more important that your animation looks realistic for the animated fantasy world you're creating, not necessarily for our world. Otherwise, you take away from the magic that started it all back in 2013.